Additional questions? Additional? Representative C. Smith, you're recognized for a question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Chair Avila. Uh, it's been great working with you in the Healthcare Appropriations Committee this session. I wanted to follow along the lines of uh, some of the many wait lists that we have in the healthcare appropriations silo. Now, I heard what you mentioned in your uh, opening remarks about the APD waiting list and how we eliminated those that were in crisis. Uh, I do wanna dig a little bit deeper into that specific wait list, the APD wait list. And I suppose my question is, is we, we are removing 306 folks who are in crisis off the APD waiting list. But as you know, that waiting list is, with, well, including them, 22,718 people long. 40% of them have been on the waiting list for over a decade. What are we doing for those individuals who are not in crisis as defined by the state? Representative Avila, you're recognized. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative, for, for, for that question. Uh, so currently we have over 20,000 um, that are not in imminent need uh, of those I-budget uh, waiver services, um, but they have registered to be on that wait list. Uh, now the 306 that, again, I, I referenced earlier, um, those 306 are really the ones, those are, those are the ones in crisis. And we have uh, provided uh, around $15 million uh, to enroll uh, those individuals, uh, again, that we have deemed, that have been deemed uh, to be in crisis uh, into the APD uh, home and community service uh, Medicaid waiver program. Additional questions? Representative Smith, you're recognized. Thank you, Speaker Burton. Uh, and thank you for the answer, Chair Avila. Uh, so as, as you know, there are multiple health care waiting lists in your budget silo, in addition to the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, I see that there's approximately 151,000 or so people on waiting lists in other categories. So my question is, does this budget do anything to address the needs of the 58,824 elderly or disabled Floridians who are on the ACA statewide Medicaid managed care, long-term care program. Because I do understand and I share with the priorities of Governor DeSantis that we're gonna put seniors first. Representative Avila, you recognized? Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative, for, for that question. So right now, our, um, so our funding covers uh, over 8% of those that are, that are the most frail. Um, and certainly, we've taken steps uh, each year, certainly, to try uh, to make sure that we cover as many people as possible, obviously, within uh, the budgetary framework and within um, you know, those, those uh, current budget um, years. So we're certainly striving towards that. And, um, and again, th I think this budget has, uh, has really made uh, a, uh, you know, a significant effort to try to make sure that we cover those people that are really most in need, most in crisis, uh, and in this case, most frail. Additional questions, Representative Smith, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I had another question separate, but let me, let me try to clarify this answer as well. You said that the budget covers 8% of those who are most frail. Are you specifically referring to the statewide Medicaid managed care long-term care program, which of course services the elderly, or are you also referring in addition to that wait list, the Department of Elder Affairs, uh, specifically they have a wait list with 69,766 seniors uh, through Alzheimer's Disease Initiative and Community Care for the Elderly. Which, which programs are you referring to that 8% of the most frail have been taken care of? Representative Avila, you're recognized. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative, for that. Um, so in terms of the 8% the, the of the most frail, uh, those are the individuals that, um, that we have, um, that we have put in in terms of $4.1 million uh, to serve those individuals, those elders, 
uh, within the um, within the Alzheimer's Disease Initiative and community care for the elderly. Um, in terms of long-term care, those are individuals that will be covered uh, within the revenue estimating. Um, the, the, the social services uh, estimating. Additional questions, Representative Smith? You're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Chair Avila. Um, I think that there is uh, some confusion that I have uh, around how we are alleviating the wait list on the line items of the budget compared to back of the bill funding. I guess I'd just still in my fifth year get a little bit confused about the difference between the two parts of the budget. So this budget includes a $40 million reduction in the APD HCBS Developmental Disabilities Waiver Program. So can you help me understand in the budget uh, why that is considering that we have increased needs and difficulties in getting waiver uh, service. Uh, are you taking people off of the waiting list who are in crisis in the back of the bill? How do you explain that $40 million reduction on the line item? Representative Avila, you recognize? Thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and thank you, Representative. So you're, you're looking at it as, as a reduction. Last year, we put in $30 million. This year, we're putting in $15 million to enroll approximately 306 uh, of those individuals that, again, we've deemed in crisis. Representative Smith, are you additional questions? Yes. You're recognized. Thank you, Speaker Burton, and thank you, Chair Avila. I know that I have a lot of questions about health care. This might be the last one, depending on your answer. Uh, so my question is about the American Recovery Act dollars signed into law by President Biden. My understanding, based on speaking to members of the Florida delegation from Congress, is that most of those American rescue dollars were intended to support healthcare related uh, areas of the budget. How in this budget silo are we using President Biden's American rescue dollars to alleviate uh, some of these many waiting lists for folks who have critical needs in the state, if we are at all? Representative Avila, you recognize? Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative, for, for that question. Um, and, and as I mentioned, I, I believe I mentioned it to uh, Representative Duran, uh, those dollars from D.C. are non-recurring, right? They're, they're a one-time shot. Um, a lot of our, our budget is really uh, recurring, right? Whenever we talk about the big items, we're, 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 we're mainly talking about recurring dollars. Um, so, you know, there's, we, can't, we can't use those non-recurring dollars in, in a recurring way. So... Um, to your to your question, um, within this current budget, there's no there's no sort of federal dollars coming in into the healthcare appropriation budget. Additional questions, Representative Smith. Thank you, Speaker Burton, and <laughs> thank you, Chair Avila. Unfortunately, I have one more question based on your answer, uh, which is help me help me understand how we can spend those American Rescue dollars from President Biden because can't we? in the healthcare silo, can't we use some of it for programs such as waiting lists for healthcare, APD, and then set some of the American rescue dollars from President Biden aside in reserves to be used in future budget years? Are we allowed to do that? Representative Avila, you recognize? Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank you, Representative, for that question. Again, this is you know, this is a, a legislative process, and I'm sure as, as we continue uh, within the budgetary process, uh, certainly we're going to have those conversations and would certainly, as always, as I've, as I've told you many times and, and many of the subcommittee members, my door is always open. I'm always open to ideas and suggestions, and certainly, um, you know, I, 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 I welcome, you know, any sort of ideas and, um, you know, any sort of dialogue on those issues. Members, moving on from the arts, I have another important amendment for you. What we have here in this amendment uh, is funding $795 million in non-recurring funds from the general revenue to the Agency for Persons with Disabilities for the waiver waitlist. It reduces funding, of course, by the same amount for the State Transportation Trust Fund, uh, 
Of course, the origin of the robust $2 billion, $2 billion in funding to the trust fund is the uh, President Biden American uh, Recovery Act. But this amendment from those dollars uh, actually will help us finally remove the 22,708 Floridians with developmental disabilities who are currently on the I-Budget Waiver waitlist, also known as the Medicaid Waiver waitlist. It moves them off the waitlist and it gets them enrolled into the services they desperately need. And I want to applaud Chair Avila for making the investments that he has made in this budget specifically to remove the 300 uh, or so persons who are on the Agency for Persons with Disabilities wait list who the state deems to be in crisis. That should be applauded. But members, what we have to understand is that that's not enough. Because in addition to those families who are in crisis, who have loved ones with developmental disabilities who need our support and need to be enrolled in this entitlement program. Yes, it is an entitlement program once they are enrolled. It's not just the families in crisis. Category three, Floridians with intensive needs. We have 871 Floridians who are waiting for services who have intensive needs. Category four, caregivers over the age of 70, 218 Floridians remain on the I-Budget waiver wait list. Category five, transitioning from school, 37 Floridians on the wait list. Category six, and this is a big one, members, because you know of people who are on this wait list. Adults age 21 and over, we have 11,850 Floridians who are on the I budget waiver wait list with developmental disabilities. Category seven, those minors under the age of 21, 9,832 Floridians waiting for care. Members, according to our own staff analysis on various health care bills that have moved through the process, we're told 40% of Floridians who are currently on the Medicaid waiver wait list, which this amendment will fully fund and eliminate this year, 40% of those Floridians with developmental disabilities have been on this wait list for 10 years years or longer. Think about that. You are a person with developmental disabilities and you are on the state Medicaid waiver wait list for over 10 years. That's 40% of the people on this wait list. Now I'm not going to lie, this is a substantial investment. I'm asking for $795 million with this amendment. I know it's not recurring. I know this. I know once they're enrolled, it's an entitlement. And we have to pay for services for the rest of their lives. So we have to find the money to find the resources for these entitlement programs. But remember, what I would offer to you is that even though my amendment is only a solution for this one year and it's not recurring, members, I think these Floridians with developmental disabilities, I think that they are worth us finding the investment to keep them enrolled in these programs. I know that you're not saying that they're not worth it when you vote no. I know that's not what you're saying. But what I'm saying is it's time for us to really make an impact on this waiver wait list. And that's why I ask, please, for your bipartisan support on this amendment. Thank you, members.